our study continues on evil. And I've said before, you're going to have to get all the videos. We've done two introductions. The first time evil shows up. And then last time we got into our first uh, title, first subject of adjective. An adjective describes. And we looked at, and I, we're not going to do all the words of evil throughout the Bible. But we got several categories right now, adjectives. And we looked at the first five that I saw fit. And they might not be what you think, or you may, I may miss some, but we got a lot of study here. And I may not get to your favorite evil, or I may get to it. But number six of our study, Judges 9.57. Judges 9.57. And we see, and if you have a hard time catching up, hit pause, find a place, and then come back. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their head. And upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jeroboam. So, what we have seen so far in review, we have seen evil beast, we have seen an evil congregation, we have seen an evil place, we have seen an evil generation, and we left off last time, we had looked at an evil disease, now we're looking at evil men, The congregation that we've already discussed is made up of God's people. The children of Israel. The evil generation were that of the children of Israel. Now, we have the children of Israel are in the land. In Joshua, they got in the land. They have been involved in murder and great sin. Men of renown, of great importance of Shechem. And the evil is a reference to a group of people of a particular place of city, the evil men of Shechem. It is not all the children of Israel. And when we bring down the word of evil, I live in Daytona Beach, Florida. I cannot say... Everybody in Daytona Beach in Florida is evil. But there are evil people in Daytona Beach. There is evil people everywhere. So, the addressment here is to all the people that are evil in, in Daytona Beach, everybody else we're not talking about. We're not talking about the people in Volusia County, which is the county that we're in. We're not talking about the people in Florida. We're addressing the evil people of Daytona Beach. And you take the city or town you're in, all right, addressing the people that are evil in your, your town or city. And well, we're not talking about the people in your county. And we're not talking about the people of your state. So we have seen a singleness of evil to a great congregation. And we have seen a group of people, the children of Israel, vast in sin. Now we, we come down to evil as one particular area. So we have a particular group of people. And the context here is the men of Shechem. We're going to go all the way to Job chapter 8. You say, well, there's a lot of evil. Yeah, there's a lot. We'll maybe get to it, Lord willing. Job chapter 8. Again, we're looking at adjective. And we've got many different sub subcategories we're going to do. And that evil may come up. But right now, all the evils between judges and now may not be description, or it may be, and I didn't see fit for the study, or maybe it's a repeat, but Job chapter 8, verse 20. Behold, God. 
will not cast away a perfect man. Neither will he help the evildoers. So taking or using Webster's 1828 Dictionary of Definitions, the definition we have and will learn throughout the Bible study of evil, there are men and women that do what defies evil. It defies it. They do it. So when we come back over here, let's go back over here with the reading of West, Webster's Dictionary Definition, 1828. To have bad qualities of a natural kind, mischievous, having qualities which lend to injury or produce mischief. That fits what we're reading, Joe. Having bad qualities of moral kind, wicked, corrupt, perverse, wrong, as evil thoughts, evil deeds, evil speaking, evil generation. That fits what we're reading, Joe. Unfortunate, unhappy, producing sorrow, distress, injury, or calamity as evil tidings and evil arrows, evil days. Uh, I said, I get the studies. We, we looked into that. We'll be looking into that. Number four, all wickedness, all crimes, all violation of law and right of moral evil. That's fits here too. Uh, number five, misfortune, mischief, and injury. That don't really fit here because we're talking about evil doers, people who do things that are evil. And then number six, depravity, corruption of heart. Here we go. And then commit wickedness. Well, that's what we got here. Here are people that commit it. And we have the practice of study of evil. To study what is and to see if we are going, if we're doing to, yeah. What it is, and to see if we are doing it to stop and to repent and get right with God in His Word. You see what's we're doing the whole study of evil right now to see are we doing evil? I mean, do you really, as a Christian, do you want to be charged with evil doers? Behold, God will not cast away the perfect man. Okay, but he says, neither will he, God, help the evildoers. And when we pray and, and seek out God and want to get aid and help from God, God's not going to help us if we're doing evil. So, if we want God's help, we got to know what evil is, and that's what this study is. As I've told you before, this study, you get it all. You can't just, okay. This is, this is, you know, the outline, and I've heard it, but I didn't hear everything else. Just heard this one part and take it out of context. Then you're going to say something I didn't say. Evil is a sin. Yes. But evil may not be a sin. It may be the consequences of sin. And I'm not going to go through all, you know, the, I'm not going to go through the marijuana. I'm not going to go through the plant. And you got to go back and listen to the other videos. You got to get them all. If I were to go back and repeat, 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 we'll just don't get half the study. You can't just read the New Testament and think, okay, I know the Bible. I just read my Psalms. I know the no, you gotta get it all. So this study of evil is if we want help from God, we can't be an evildoer. How are we gonna know if we're an evildoer? We gotta study it out. And previously spoken, murmur, murmuring is evil. We've already talked about murmuring. It's an evil. Get the previous lessons. You're going to get tired of me here and say that. But I'm not going to go back and review what we've already reviewed. When, when there's, a, there's, there's a file, you can get it. So I want God to help me. I want God to answer my prayer. If I'm murmuring, the Bible calls that evil. I am murmuring. I'm an evildoer. God's not going to help me. See that? See what you just learned. Then if we do it, we're evildoers. So evil are people that do evil. I'm a Christian. Do you practice something that's evil? 
Well, I don't know. This is what this study's for. Here it is. Remember when, oh, if you can find it, but we did a complete, we, we did every time the word fool as a root word showed up in the Bible. Fool, foolish, fools, foolishness. And when we went through that study, you know what I found out? Many a times, I'm a born-again fool. I found myself guilty many times. I'm going to probably find myself guilty in this study, and I hope where you lie, where you have your problem, I hope you will find yourself guilty and repenting and confessing your evilness. Sure, don't want to be evil in the eyes of God. So Psalms chapter 10. Psalms chapter 10. And I apologize. My page is stick, so hoping my page is sticking will help you to get some time to find where we're at. Psalms chapter 10, verse 15. Those are birds of what you hear. Break down the arm of the wicked. That's the Antichrist there. Mark the wicked. When you see the wicked, that's not only the wicked people, but that's a reference to the Antichrist, most likely. Not always, but most likely that'd be a reference to the Antichrist. And the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. That'd be the second advent of Jesus Christ. But there'll be still wickedness when Satan is unloosed from his bound from a thousand years and he gets an army to go against God in Israel. But that's not our study right now. So we have a congregation. We have a generation. We have men. We just looked at that in Judges 9, 57. We also have now a man. This is adjective. We're describing evil. We have a man that is evil. Okay. Let's break it down to. You can have an entire state of the Union of America, United States of America. You can take one entire state. You can take an entire uh, county. You can take an entire city. And now we're taking it down to one man. And the context of this verse is a wicked. The wicked and the evil men are together. He's evil and he's wicked. Break down the arm of the wicked and the evil man together. That and connects them together. Seek out his wickedness. Well, which one? The wicked or the evil? And see, they have a problem with Titus 2.13 that, you know, it says God and Jesus Christ. Well, I'll go get me a chocolate chip cookie. Well, I'm not going to go get me a chocolate chip and a cookie. It's all together in one. That was a bad example, wasn't it? The wicked and the evil man together. All right, I got a better one. Cookies and cream. What, what, what do you What do you have? I'm having cookies and cream. Uh, I got a glass of milk and a glass. No, it's it's together. <laughs> so, evil is associated with wickedness. Now remember, God doesn't help. Does, God will not help the evil person. And in our evil and our sin, we don't want to be wicked. But sin is sin. Again, here the, the, the evil was a singular man. Psalms 26 5. Psalms 26 5. You know, you could have a great church, there are great churches. And in that church, you could have one sinner. You could have a group of sinners. The whole congregation could be sinning. 
that church in Corinth, they were allowing one man who was having a sexual perversion sin with his, his father's wife, and they were all evil because they were all allowing it. Psalms 26.5 I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Oh, look at that. There we go there. So we've already looked at congregation, evil congregation of children of Israel. But I have hated the congregation of evildoers. We've already seen evildoers. So with what we learn in Job 8.20, we just did. Look at Numbers 14.27. Go back. We've done this a little while, last study. Numbers 14.27. We got a double whammy here. Numbers 14.27. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? If that's not bad enough. And if Job 8, 20 evildoers is not bad enough, we got a congregation of evildoers. A religion. We've got a religion. There are congregation groups and some called church and they think they're doing what God approves, but they're not. Thus, they are disobeying God, evildoers. When the Bible says you're not to eat or drink blood, either testament, and you go about to perform the thing, I'm going to eat blood and say it's God, and you're going to take part. The church says that the mass is, that's it. It's one of their sacraments. All right. That's an evil. And when the congregation gets up and takes part of that, the church, the group, the gathering, the Catholics get up and take part of what violates the scriptures. You got an evil congregation. And what is what is that congregation doing? They're being evil doers by taking part what the Bible says no. It forbids abomination. And when you get a religion that says, if we if you will not convert to our religion, you are an infidel. And we're going to make you a slave, or we're going even to, to cut your head off in the name of Allah. Or in the name of, of Muhammad. When the Bible, the King James Bible of Jehovah, the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in both Testaments, forbids the act of murdering. And when the religion go out and, and slay the blood and get rid of the infidels, that's wrong. That's evil. And when you got a congregation that believes that teaching, and when you got the people of that religion going out and practicing making people slay, torturing them, and killing them in the name of their religion, you now have a congregation of evildoers. That's a problem. You got a religion that says, blink. You got a group of people that believe in that boing. That's the congregation. And when they take part of that boing, now you got evildoers. Listen, you can sit in a Catholic church, and you may not partake of all that goes on and not be an evildoer. You may be that one that doesn't. You may have somebody who is in a proper Christian church. I'm not going to say Baptist. I'm going to say you're in a proper Christian church. The church, the people who love the Lord, they're saved, they believe the Bible. And they do right. And not all churches are perfect, but 
We're gonna cut. You got one man that goes in, that's in that church and he goes and takes part of the mass, or he goes out and kills people. We got one evil man in the congregation, but not all the congregation is. See, evil has a broad sense. It may be one, it may be a group, maybe congregation, maybe doers. There are mobs of groups, not churches, that are spending their time, their money, and effort, excuse me, and doing evil. Nothing that God approves of by the Holy Bible. There are people who go out there and they riot because they didn't get their way. One of their people was, you know, looked at by uh, was looked at a wrong way by a police officer. So we got to go out and violence. We got to go out and protest. You won't give us rights because we have a sexual orientation that does not match what you believe. We're going to go out and riot. We're going to go out and call. We're going to spread our diseases. Well, you get a group of people doing evil, and they're not religious. They're still going against what the scripture says. You got religions that go against the scriptures and their people do wrong. Congregation that is an evildoer. And you got people who are not a church, who are a group of people who are doing what the Bible says wrong. And you got a congregation group of people evildoing. Hollywood in the movie television field are a group or a congregation of people of doing evil. For a prophet and trying to evangelize more to join the masses of actors and actresses and directors and all that is associated with the movie and television industry. And when I said prophet, I didn't mean make money. I meant the, the, the field of Hollywood go out and try to find more actors, actors. They try to find more actresses. They try to find more people to, to make the movies and, and to be directors, and they try to build up the Hollywood, build up the movie industry, and all in the name of doing evil. When you got a man kissing another woman on the screen or a man kissing another man, and that is not their spouse, that is adultery or fornication, that is against the scriptures. You got a congregation of a union of television and movies that are practicing what the Bible says not to do, and they're evildoers, cussing and murdering. Well, they you know they play. Listen, the Bible says that. Uh, I can't think of it. When that man came to David and said, "I slew King Saul," he didn't do it. But David said, because you said you did, charged him with murder. I mean, I could do a whole thing on Hollywood. Matthew 7, 22. I need a joining verse, Matthew 7. Hollywood, well, I, when I say Hollywood, I mean all the movies, wherever they make movies. It's a realm of Congregation of actors, actresses, producers, lights. Uh, trying to think what they, what they do to clothing. I can't think what they call it. Wardrobe. It's all the congregation of people, and their very thing is to do evil and sin against God. And that's an. It's not a religion, but it can be. People put their faith in Hollywood and in the movies. Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Do not churches do things in the name of God and do evil? Yes, they do. 
Because they got put a name of religion or church does not mean they're right with God. Are there not groups of people out there that do things in the name of God and do evil? Correct. Does not Hollywood make a Christian movie to, to sucker the Christians to come into their realm? Yes, they do. So we have an evil congregation, a group of people doing evil. How are you? Are you a Christian? You're in a proper church. You're doing right. But when you're outside the church doors, you're with a group of people who are doing evil. How about you go to church and then when you're outside of church, you go to a secret society of masons or whatever you would have in the realm of the occult. There you go. You're with another congregation that does evil in the name of God. But that's all wicked. I don't know. That's another study. I'm telling you, it's wicked. Back to Psalms. I just made some people. I don't care. I get people mad at me all the time. Psalms 56. The realm of secret societies are not. They're not correct. And they do it in the name of God. So do Catholics. So does Muslims. So do the Mormons. So do the Jehovah Witnesses. And they're wrong. They violate the scriptures. Psalms 56, verse 5. Every day they rest. It means twist, exhort, violence. My words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. I think we're going to stop here. All right, so here we go. There's another evil. Every day they rest my words. Don't you rest my words. And they're probably out there, people taking these videos and, and the sound and the audio and that. They probably cut and splice and make me say something I didn't say. They change what you say. They're judgmental of what you say. I just said something about secret societies. I just said something about the Catholics. I just said something about the Muslims. I just said something about the Jehovah Witnesses. And people are mad and, and they're going to twist what I said. They, every day to rest my words, all their thoughts are against me for evil. So again, we've seen a congregation. We've seen a generation. We've seen groups. We've seen a man. We've seen man. We've, we found involved with evil. Well, well, why not our th their thoughts or our thoughts? Thoughts can be evil. The psalmist is claiming the thoughts are against them. The person of God, the writer of the psalm. There are people who are thinking against. I am involved in the public ministry at the farmer's market in Daytona Beach. And there, I, we've been there for five to six years. And there are people who think evil thoughts against us. They wish I would drop dead. They wish a car would run me over. They wish things to shut up the word of God. That's what we're talking about right here. There are people in your family who say, well, you know, I invited such and such. I wish they wouldn't come. You know, they're just Bible, Bible, Jesus, Jesus, Bible, Bible. I wish you did not invite them. If you invite them to come, we're not coming. That's evil thoughts. When you say, I wish that pastor would just shut up, get over, you know, it's almost getting time for a new time. I wish he'd quit. That's evil thoughts. A Christian should not wonder if his family, friends, co workers, or other Christians and people have never met or will meet should have evil thoughts against them and taking harm or injury against those who live the Bible instruction. If you're going to live right, 
people are going to think ill or evil thoughts against you. We just got finished with a, this weekend, multiple Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, with the Daytona 500, preaching, getting gospel tracts. Not everybody enjoys that. We had where the police officer would, would hold the people, to, you know, across the road, and they got angry that the cop would not let them cross right away. They would try to cross themselves, the officer would stop them, and they get mad because there's a preacher over here preaching the gospel, preaching Jesus, and they don't want to hear it, and they wish the cop would get out of the way, they wish I would get out of the way, they wish they could just get going. I can imagine all the thoughts that have been thought about me or to me, however you want to put it, by Christians, by my family, by unsaved people, by coworkers. I've had I have been fired by two jobs because I'm a Christian. I can just imagine what they thought. And they would have to sit in their room and think, how can we get rid of this man and not in the realm of religion? Because if we fire him based on religion, he can take us to court and sue us our pants off. I had another company fire me stupidly, and oh, they could just get me fired before. But I can go after, you know, I wouldn't do it, but I would go on after, they, they would thought I'd go after them because of religious freedom. I mentioned the, the secret society. I was caught by my boss reading a book about secret lodges and all that, and the guy threatened to turn me into his secret order. In the name of Christianity, you know, he was a Christian. And outright told me that I could face consequences if I kept on. I read that book all the way to the end. I've had Christians in churches against us. I have had a, a pastor of a church because we went to Daytona 500, that we skipped the church service because of it. I've had a pastor of Daytona Beach in Holly Hill. That was the most vile, as wicked thing we could ever do. How dare you skip my church service? I've had pastors come up to me. and How dare you say that, uh, you know, to me about, you know, I'm just showing you what the Bible says. I have gone up to Christians with the Bible and say, hey, this is what the Bible says. This is what you're doing. And then John chapter 7, verse 7. John 7, 7. I mean, Christian, don't think everybody loves you. And if you think everybody loves you, you are not involved with a public ministry. I've gone knocking on doors. Oh, they hate when you do that. I had one time went knocking on door with a brother. Walked up the steps, go knocking on door. Everybody takes off. I can imagine what they're thinking. And, and he looked at me and says, why did they do that? I said, because we're carrying Bibles. What do you think they thought when here comes two men with a Bible walking up there and they all take off and didn't answer the door? What do you think when, when you come walking up to the door? Get off my step, you Bible thumper, you. Get out of here. I'm going to get my gun. I'm going to get my... I had one with the dog. Chased the... Sick the dog on it. What do you think they think? What do you think they think when you try to give them a piece of paper? I'm good. No, you're not. John chapters, what did I say, 7, 7. The world cannot hate you. That's where the liberal will stop, right there. The world cannot hate you, but me, Jesus, it hated. They hated Jesus. They'll hate you, Christian. And if they don't hate you, you're doing something wrong. Either that person loves the Lord as much as you love the Lord, or you're not living right. They hated Jesus, and they talked ill of Jesus. Some people think they that, that they're going to, some Christians think they're going to be treated better and beyond how they treated Jesus. 
when the end of Jesus' life, they gave him a cross. Christians expect glory, honor, and praise and nonsense. Uh, chapter 15, verse 8. John 15, verse 8. John 15, 18. Excuse me. John 15, 18. And if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So what do you think their thoughts are going to be? Are they just going to have great, wonderful thoughts for you? Absolutely not. Now, let me, let me tell you what a contra is to this verse right here, and I'll give you. My pastor loves my family and what we do for the service of the Lord. He came out with us uh, Saturday, and we had another brother in the church come out. We went out passing out gospel tracts. And he knows Sunday morning we didn't we didn't go to church. We go preach and, and pass out the tracks on the on at the Daytona 500. I know he and the church were praying for us. I know we, we he was egging us on, encouraged us, keep on going, keep on going, keep on doing. And then he was talking about the other day. He, he says he says you know there was twenty five uh, there's twenty five videos and he says man I'm up to number nine wow. You know what he's doing? He, he you know, he, he he's learning himself. But he's, you know, wow, that's good. Do it. Keep doing. It. That's great. All right, let's go. That's someone who loves the Lord. Now, on the other hand, you're involved in such a ministry like that, and somebody comes up to you and says, "Shut the blank up. Get out of here." Or we're going to hire a DJ and he's going to play his music louder than you're able to preach. We're going to call the police on you. Get yourself off my property and don't you dare come back. Don't bite them to, to the party. Yeah, you know, I got rickety Raff family. Uh, you know, you uh, you don't believe what he does. He goes on the street and yells at people. Ah, I can't believe he, he's related to me. They're thinking evil. They hate you. So, I mean, I've had people, you know they hate you? You know there's, I've had people, they're, they're so funny, they'll come up to me on the street, and they love the Lord. I mean, and they'll come up to you and say, you know, that group of people, they're, they're, they're talking bad about you. It's like, yeah, I know. I had, I had one testimony as we're turning. Let's go to the next slide. I'll tell you the testimony. Uh, 1 John 3, 13. I had a guy tell me one time at the farmer's market. 1 John 3, 13. He said, there was this, there was this woman there. She said, she hated us. <laughs> she hated us. I don't know who it is. And she says, you know what? She says, he told me, he says, she watched us. He said, you know, that guy is faithful. And we've been, we've gone all kinds of rounds with the police department and, and lawyers for the fight of the, of the farmer's market. It's just. And then finally, you know what? He said, she changed her mind. She said, and I, she don't love us and like, but she said, no, I respect him. And I told you to tell them that they don't always have to hate you forever. Those evil thoughts, don't want, they could, that woman may get saved. I hope she does. But on the most part, you take a stand for Jesus and somebody's going to try to kick your feet under. 1 John 3.13, marvel not my brethren, written to save people, brethren. If the world hates you, and if the world hates you, what do you think they're going to think about you? You know, I think we got one more verse. 2 Timothy 3.12. 2 Timothy 3.12. I'll turn to 2 Timothy 3.12. I'll tell you not. I'm going to try and not mention names, but anybody knows what the result with this was. You'll know what I'm talking about. But where I lived in Connecticut, there was a, a coffee place. 
and the owner got saved, or the new uh, whatever the owner was was saved. Let's, I'll say that. I don't. And the owner said to you one day, and this was great. I'm going to put scripture on my coffee cups. Man, he had John 3.16. He had Romans 6.23 and others. I mean, good scriptures. And what have we been reading? It says right here, but... Am I in the right place? Second Timothy 3.16. No, it's not. Three, Second Timothy 3.12. Yay! That's what the devil said in the beginning. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So here's a guy. He's, you know what? I'm going to live for the Lord. I want to do right for the Lord. I want to evangelize. I want to use my coffee cup. I think he even put it on the napkin still. So what evil thought they're going to do? The newspaper came up with a group of people. Now they're thinking. They got to think of this before they put it in the paper. And it's wrong. This was a new idea. He was also selling cigarettes. Tobacco products. And we're going to attack him by, you know, he, look at that. He sells tobacco products and puts scripture on the cup. From a place that advertises horoscopes, topless bars, casinos, alcohol sales, half naked women selling cars. Lying about and destroying families. And never to report the, the bad news of the newspaper itself and the, and the people that, that are in the background newspaper. Thinking of ways they can destroy this, per, this, this company and this person. That's ridiculous. And yet, don't be fooled. Marvel not. My brethren, if the world hates you. One of the evil things that we, we've gone through the studies now. Congregation, beasts, people, men, congregation, evildoers. Thoughts. If a man looks upon a woman to, to lust after in his heart, he has already committed adultery with her. When you're thinking about that woman and, and pornography and all that, that's an evil thought. When you're thinking about deceiving somebody, that's an evil thought. When you're thinking about doing harm to somebody, that's an evil thought. Now, Christian, we looked at Job. Those thoughts that we talked about, the thoughts that you talked, the evil thoughts. Are you an evildoer? God may not help you.